Hello, welcome to the How Do Juno's Ansible Modules Work Learning Bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Thank you for being here. Let's get started. After completing this learning bite, you should be able to explain how Juno's Ansible modules work. In a typical Ansible installation, managing, for example, Linux servers, when an Ansible playbook is executed, the playbook and the Python modules that will perform the tasks that are defined in the playbook are copied to the Linux hosts, and the Python interpreter on those Linux hosts and those modules will perform the tasks defined in the playbook. So in this case, Python would need to be installed on these servers, so the playbooks run the modules. Well, on Jun Juniper platforms, it, it works a little bit differently. The playbooks and the Python modules are executed on the Ansible controller. Juniper has been around for over 25 years, and so customers have platforms deployed in their networks today that may not support running Python. And because of that, the playbook and the Python modules are not copied to the host. The Ansible controller will establish a netconf over SSH connection to the platforms and then execute the tasks in the playbook using the juniper.device Ansible collection Python modules. Python interpreter on the Ansible controller will execute the Python modules that perform the tasks that are defined in the playbook, but at no time are the playbooks or the Python modules ever copied down to the Juno's hosts. How did I figure this out? Well, I, I read the documentation and it told me, but as I was troubleshooting some other Ansible issues that I was having, I, I discovered this, and this was magic for me. You know, I'm running an Ansible playbook. I don't expect you to be able to see this output. It's really small, but I just want to hit a couple things here, and I'll connect to a device, and we'll run this, and I'll show you some easier-to-read output. But nothing magic here. I'm simply running an Ansible playbook. Here's the name of the playbook. I'm managing seven VMX platforms, and this playbook just simply verifies that all seven of those devices have netconf enabled. That allows me to run Ansible playbooks against those managed devices. Now, the dash V enables more verbose output when the playbook is executed, and it seems like the more Vs you staple onto that, the more verbose the output is. The most I've ever seen is dash four Vs, and it's a good bit of output. So instead of having us look at output from all seven devices, I just simply filtered that with grep to look. Let's just look at VMX1 and let's see how this works. I'm going to connect to my Ansible management workstation now, and we'll take a look at some of this output to help us understand exactly how these modules work. All right, here is my Ansible workstation, and let's run the Ansible playbook again with my four Vs. I just want to see the output for VMX1, please. And so we're going to verify NetConf connectivity. And the cool thing is the font is a little bigger in this terminal window. And, and so here's what goes on. When I run that playbook, Ansible connects to the Junos platforms using, it establishes a NetConf over SSH connection using that user account, LAB in my case. That's important because I know two things. If I want to manage those devices using Ansible, I need to have NetConf over SSH enabled. And each of those devices needs this user account configured. That user account needs to have sufficient permissions to perform the tasks that are defined in your playbook. And I need a way to authenticate that user. Username and password may be in the playbook or prompt the user when the playbook is run. Or probably a better solution is just to simply authenticate using an SSH public key. But I know a lot right there just about what's going on. That's who it's connecting as. That's who I'm logged in at. And that's, that's why that's that way. And then what it does is it, it continues now. I've connected. And the task in the playbook 
is going to connect to the device and then verify that NetConf is enabled, right? I'm going to connect to TCP port 830 and verify that. And there's a Python module that does that. And so what it does is it makes a directory on my local Ansible workstation. I mean, my working directory is homelab.ansible is where my Ansible collections are stored. And so it's going to create a temp folder. You'll see it here, homelab.ansible temp, ansible temp. And it's got a big old long number at the end of it. Sets the permissions on there, but this is on my local system, right? It's not going to copy the Python modules to the Junos devices. And so it creates the temp directory that it can copy the Python modules to so they can be executed. And then it tries to figure out, okay, on this workstation, what version of Python are you running, right? There's some dependencies. I might not be able to use this module with that version of Python, but I need to know what version of Python you have. And then, you know, in my case, it's Python 3.8 is what is discovered. Then it takes, once it knows that information, and puts the Python module from the Juniper.device Ansible collection in this case that is used to perform the task in the playbook. It takes and puts that in that temp directory with that big, long number on it, right? And then it sets permissions to execute that Python module and it executes it. And the tasks in my playbook are now complete. And you'll see that when it's done, it removes that temp folder and any copied Python modules from my local system from that temp directory. And I see my results. So I, I can see, well, it connected. Here's who it authenticated as. There's the temp directory that it made. There's the module that it used. It executed. And then everything is completely removed as if nothing happened. So that's the benefit of using those dash multiple Vs and being able to interpret this output and understand this process better. In this Learning Byte, we explained how Junos Ansible modules work. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, Join the discussion.